once you fall in love with penguins, it's really hard to leave them. My name is Dee Borsma, and I've been studying penguins for over 40 years. People don't often think about penguins being similar to humans, but they really are. They walk upright, they're often comical. Many of them are faithful. They're trying to find food, they're trying to find shelter, and they're trying to raise a family. Scientifically, they're really interesting because they're ocean sentinels. They tell us a lot about what's happening in the marine environment, and in many cases, what's happening in the land environment as well. Like many other species that inhabit the Galapagos, these penguins have evolved over thousands of years to survive in this harsh, tropical desert. The key to survival for the penguins is the availability of food in the form of small fish and crustaceans that are carried to the surface of the ocean by the upwelling of the deep, cold water. During upwelling, food is plentiful and the penguins thrive. When the trade winds slow, upwelling fails, and the ocean becomes warm without nutrients. This phenomenon is known as El Nino. During El Nino, food is scarce, threatening the penguins' survival. Unfortunately, with global climate change, El Nino events are getting stronger, longer, and more frequent. When I first went to the Galapagos, I counted noses, because we had no idea how many Galapagos penguins there are. I counted more than 2,000. There are years after El Nino where we count a little over 400. These penguins recover, but they've never recovered to what they were in 1970. One of the things we would really like to do is see if we can't build that population. These penguins need dry, shady nests to breed successfully. And the crevices and lava tubes found on these volcanic shores make perfect nesting sites. But nest sites like these are rare. With erosion and rising sea levels, there simply aren't enough good natural nest sites anymore. We realized that maybe if we built nests for the penguins, we could actually increase the population. So we used picks and shovels and dug out burrows in the lava tuff. We moved big plates of lava to build shade for these Galapagos penguins. Our hope is that when conditions are good, and they're not always going to be good, but when they're good, everybody that wants to breed can breed. When you go back to the Galapagos, you never know what you're going to find. And it was just so exciting when we saw one of these nests that we built that had an egg in it. And the amazing thing is we checked that egg, and the next day we came back, and that egg had hatched. Here's the eggshell. Look at how tiny he is. When you see a baby chick for the first time, that you know wouldn't be there if you hadn't built him a house. It's really moving. 56 grams, gained 10 grams since yesterday, and it's all gone to his little stomach. Got a little paunch, which is really nice to see, and he's three days old today. Mom's with him, dad should be coming home soon. It just makes you realize that if you give them a little help, we might have these penguins around for many more generations.